Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be looking at Airbnb data in New York City. We're gonna be trying to understand the different locations and the correlations between uh, listing counts. So how many Airbnbs are listed within those specific neighborhoods. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see here, first we gotta import the necessary libraries. For now, we're not gonna need any of the sklearn libraries because that's for the regression and machine learning model we're gonna do next week. Uh, just focus on the matplotlib, the cbor, numpy, and pandas because we won't need all of that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load the data set. We're going to be using the New York City Airbnb open data. For, for you to load that, all you got to do is type in New York City in your search bar. And the first one that pops up is the one you want. And then next, we're going to explore the data by doing a simple uh, head check and describe so that we can see you know, what the data looks like. Here we see there's a bunch of variables, but the ones we're mainly interested for this specific video is the neighborhood group, uh, the listing count, and the longitude latitude, because this is what we're gonna use to plot the maps. Obviously, we're gonna wanna clean the data. For this data, I'm just gonna drop all the null values and uh, forget about them. We can obviously go into more depth when cleaning the data, but for this specific project, I'm just gonna drop all the null values and visualize the data. The first visualization is the distribution of listing prices. I just want to understand the rent prices for this data. As you can see here, the distribution of listing prices is pretty skewed to the right, uh, which means most of the prices are clumped up all over here. Uh, they're probably between zero to a thousand dollars. But if you look up here with our describe, you can see that the max price is ten thousand dollars and the average is about one hundred fifty-two dollars a month. I'm assuming and. Uh, we can use that as a reference when going into the analysis later on. But for right now, that's all we're gonna do with prices. We're gonna focus more on listing types and counts. So when it comes to room types, there are three different types. There's a private room, there's a entire home or apartment, and there's also a shared room. And we can see that the entire home is the most commonly listed uh, type, which is pretty interesting. And we can go more in depth with this and determine a correlation between type of room and price later on. But yeah, so now we're gonna go ahead and look at the number of listings by neighborhood. As I predicted, Brooklyn and Manhattan had the most number of listings, followed by Queen and then Bronx, uh, and lastly, Staten Island. Uh, this tells me that Brooklyn and Manhattan are the hotspots, meaning there's a lot of demand for apartments in Brooklyn and Manhattan, so the supply has to follow. I would also predict that Brooklyn and Manhattan have the highest pricing because the demand is very high there. So uh, we'll see that in the next video, but for right now, this is, uh, this is all the information we need. I like visualizing things out, so I'm gonna visualize this on a map so I can do a heat map later on and look at the different variations of colors for the different price points for my specific locations or neighborhoods in the future. So yeah, for that, we're gonna be using a different type of pandas. We're gonna be using GeoPandas to read the location data and plot it on a map. This is the code right here. This is a brief overview of uh, GIS. I took a GIS class and I found that maps are very useful when it comes to data analysis. So we'll be using a map right here. And you can see that the labels of all the different neighborhoods are labeled and the color intensity of listings are on the right. So we see here that Brooklyn and Manhattan have the highest intensity, Bronx and Staten Island have the lowest intensity and Queens is somewhere in the middle. You can also see the sizes of these specific neighborhoods. You can see that Queens has the highest size uh, in terms of square feet. Brooklyn is somewhere probably the second highest or second largest. Staten Island probably comes in third, and then Bronx and Manhattan. However, Manhattan and Brooklyn are the highest in terms of number of listings, so that's interesting. In the next video, we'll be exploring the relationship between these locations and prices and compare them with the room types or apartment types. So yeah, this is probably gonna be a three-part series where we're gonna do some data analysis on the pricing for the next episode, and then in the last episode, we're probably gonna be building a model to predict those prices using the information we already have. So yeah, that's all we have for today, guys. I'll leave the link to the code and the data set in the description below. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down in the description below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.